Hi, my name is Amanda Gullerud, and my video two project for Technology and Society is on the invention of social apps. Throughout this video, I will cover how social media can be applied to Giddens' ideology on the juggernaut of modernity. When relating to modernity, time space, expansions, and disembedding forces, I will include how social media protects users' privacy and affects their mental health. Phones with texting and messaging services came out in the late 90s. Eventually, Tom Anderson and Chris DeWolf in 2003 invented MySpace. MySpace is an instant chat platform that allows you to customize your profile, and it quickly became the most famous social media platform for its time. With computers, people were able to connect with each other easier than on email, and chat rooms now allowed instant messaging. These social media platforms became popularized with the invention of smartphones and app stores. More people were buying them and having access to all of these apps that related to games, banking, fitness, and social media apps intrigued people because of profile customization and posts and being able to communicate with other people. Smartphones became essential to be on these platforms. This quickly became the norm for society and is ever increasing. Now, when we ask to connect with people, it's normally, are you on Facebook? What's your Instagram handle? Why is it that social media has become so widely known? Well, having this much access to connection and information is an amazing advance in technology. Advertisements are enticing and push viewers to join the Apple team or the Samsung team. You can buy things as easily as clicking on a post, and you can share posts that relate to your political standing and any other organizations you support. Here I have a timeline of the most popular social media apps. Let's start with Facebook. Facebook is one of the most used social media apps around the world. It is easier on the older generation, and it has features such as the marketplace where people can buy, sell, or rent items. It's got dating, which finds people in your area who are also using the dating feature. You can join groups such as Free Swap, which is popular for moms with children to swap clothes, shoes, and toys for free. You can post up to a thousand photos at a time, although that's not recommended. And to be able to message on Facebook is a completely separate app called Facebook Messenger. They are connected though, meaning if you click on the message button on someone's profile in the Facebook app, the app will redirect you to the Facebook Messenger app into a chat with that specific person. Moving on to Twitter. Twitter was created in 2006 and it is a short information sharing platform. You can private message inside of the app and posts are limited to four photos and 280 characters per post. The retweeting feature allows you to share posts and add your own comment. Instagram is currently the runner up for being the most used social media app. Funnily enough, Facebook also owns Instagram. Originally, it was a picture posting only platform whereas now you can upload pictures or videos. Currently, you can upload 10 pictures or videos per post. And in 2022, Instagram adopted Reels, which is similar to TikTok videos, and they did this to compete with TikTok popularity. Snapchat is an instant picture messaging platform. It's got many features, such as streaks, which indicate how many days you and a friend have snapped consecutively. It's got stories, which you can post as many photos or videos as you want, but it does have to be one at a time. And they've got private messaging. You can save text manually or choose from none, saved in the last 24 hours, or saved indefinitely. Then there's TikTok. TikTok is a video platform that lets you post videos from 15 seconds to a whole minute long. It was originally called Douyin. The company that owns Douyin bought Musical.ly in 2017 and merged these two platforms together to create TikTok. A recent new feature is Stories, which closely resembles Instagram and Snapchat Stories. This section of the video will cover Giddens' ideology. The Juggernaut of Modernity Giddens describes the modern world as a juggernaut, an overwhelming force that we might lose control over if we are not careful. Industrialization, capitalism, and surveillance all play significant roles when analyzing social media apps. For example, these social media apps are coded to suggest related content based on what we view and tracks what we share, comment, or like. 
In order to have access to social media apps, you have to buy a smartphone or a computer, and buying from popular brands are easily going to cost over $1,000. Our technology is majority outsourced, being assembled by children in countries like China, Thailand, and South Korea. Moving on to disembedding forces. Giddens believes that local groups thrive on socialization with their communities. Because of this juggernaut issue, modernization has disconnected locals from their communities and local organizations crumble due to lack of communal support. Industrialization has taken us away from our close-knit cohorts. We work farther away because we have access to these jobs. We can find these jobs by job postings online at any time. Facebook groups also create job cohorts. You can build a community within these settings, and virtual communities have taken a hold of people. Moving on to time-space distanciation. Giddens uses this ideology to explain how time and space are in a continuous state of change due to modern advancements. Every technological advancement made expands time. By this, Giddens means that the further technology cuts into production times, it is opening up more time for other activities. For example, before technology, you could only catch up with people when you saw them and then later by mail. Now, you can pick up your phone and text someone and receive a reply in under 10 seconds. That is, if you have a friend who is a good texter. Now we don't have to wait on replies and we can rely on getting in touch with someone within seconds. We are in more control over our everyday activities in our lives. Thinking about how modernity hinders us in this way is that even though we can fit more into a smaller time frame, one could argue that now we have more things to do. Social media apps have allowed us to keep contact with others around the world easily. Because we have access to easy communication, people can go days texting without physically talking while still communicating. People have access to jobs outside of their local communities, remote options are available through technological connection, and love of relationships can be conjured. In continuing Giddens ideology, I'm going to be talking about symbolic tokens and trust in expert systems. When Giddens talks about symbolic tokens, he's talking about how our society puts value on physical objects, such as money. We can exchange money for products and power. Money is an example of a symbolic token that disembeds citizens by morphing timelines of situations. In other words, you don't have to grow a garden to rely on food since the grocery store is right down the street. Relating to social media apps, views, likes, and shares are considered symbolic tokens to users. The more likes you get, the happier you are. If you create a big enough following on social media, companies might find an interest in sponsoring you. Instagram Real Play is a private group where Instagram personally invites content creators who already have a huge following and high views on their reels to make money if they keep creating popular content. So based on symbolic tokens that gain popularity, you can be awarded with higher symbolic tokens like being paid for dancing behind the phone. Trust in Expert Systems Giddens talks about how modernity has furthered our trust in expert systems. A lot of the times, we don't have the qualifications to provide services to other people, such as medical help. Therefore, we trust in our doctors. For social media, the experts are the policy writers and the owners because they control the ins and outs of the apps and its users. Users have to realize that there is a trade happening here when you create a free social media account. Where is your information going? Where are your pictures and videos being stored? Can you trust these people? This part of the presentation, I will be talking about privacy policies and the evaluations of apps. For this slide, I will be talking about Snapchat's privacy policies. The wording of their data selling policy is that your information will not be sold to third parties, but under the third party content and integrations clause, they clearly state, you may be providing information to the third party as well as Snap. We are not responsible for how those third parties collect or use your information. They also state that if the company were to be bought, they may share your information with the company before and after the transaction closes. Some of the benefits to Snapchat is the control over your information section towards the end of the policy. A benefit of Snapchat's privacy policies is the control over your information section. 
This is towards the end of the policy, and it says that you can switch off giving up this much access to information they collect. You can do this by changing the settings in the app or the device if your device offers these options. Of course, if you do that, certain services may lose full functionality. For example, the whole app might stop working because it cannot access your camera, microphone, contacts, etc. Commonsense.org evaluates privacy and resources and calculates them on how good or bad the app is. This is the App versus App Education Edition. Canvas is currently a paid service and has a worse security score on Common Sense than Google Classroom. It is what we use at ECU as our main online school service, and personally, I like it. I don't find a problem with it, but it is surprising to know that they score lower than Google Classroom. Google Classroom is a free service, and it has a better security score on commonsense.org despite it being a free service. This is not used at ECU, but is used at other schools, primarily high schools and elementary schools. Using commonsense.org again, this is app versus app messaging edition. Snapchat has a 61% on commonsense.org and it outlines terms and agreements semi-clearly. States information is protected, but it does not expand further than that. If your settings for location are turned on, other snappers in the area are able to find your account and add you as a friend. Tracking exists, but information is not sold to third parties. In comparison to Kik, well, let's just say Kik was not okay for children to have. They have a 44% rating and they collect personal information such as first and last name, mailing address, email address, telephone number, and more. Terms do not guarantee information will not be sold to third parties. This part of the presentation is the effects that social media has on mental health. Mental health has become a growing topic the more people have access to socializing with each other online. For example, those with anxiety might support embedding forces in that ordering food doesn't have to be an awkward phone call anymore. Some of the pros that social media has on mental health is that it allows people to have long-distance relationships or stay connected with locally distant family members. Groups on social media create environments for people to connect and find relatable people. Unlimited information is spread and it helps people keep up with current events and possible awareness such as mental health. And the entertainment we get from these apps is so fun and motivating. Seeing people try to work out or create may motivate people watching to try it too. Some of the negative effects that social media apps have on mental health is that the information received is not always factual. Also, people vent online. Subtweeting is a tactic that Twitter users may try when talking bad about someone but not including their at or their handle. It's basically being passive aggressive. Social media can also create a sense of loneliness. People become depressed through lack of contact. Talking through social media apps or reading comments is not enough to satisfy a normal amount of socializing. This here is an example of a positive profile you might come across on social media. These types of profiles should be spreading positivity, showing authenticity, and being friendly towards global and social issues. By spreading positivity, people create communities that are full of like-minded individuals who share common interests. Some of these communities are inspirational and uplifting. By being authentic, this can make people feel liberated when posting their real life on social media. For example, moms post pictures of their children every day because they're happy. Positive profiles also share factual information. There's nearly unlimited information on the internet, and while there is a lot of fake information, there is also a plethora of real information. Checking sources and comparing them definitely matters when it comes to this. I use Jamila Jamil as an example of a positive profile. Her last three posts have been spreading awareness of eating disorders, shortage of insulin, and access to safe abortions. This is an example of a negative profile. Negative profiles normally harass, spread negativity, and share false information with other users. People see the internet and the anonymity that comes with it as a chance to act on their impulses that they would not otherwise act on in public. 
There are many extreme toxic environments on the internet that center around harassing people. An example of this harassment was in a Netflix documentary called Don't Fuck With Cats. This showed us users of Facebook trying to catch the person who was uploading videos of them killing kittens by internet sleuthing. They then accused the wrong person and that person ended up committing suicide. By spreading negativity, people comment hateful words on posts without fail. And the more likes and views that you get, the higher chance of you receiving a mean comment. These negative profiles also share false information for fearful persuasion, propaganda, and just straight up information that they know isn't true. I use Kanye West as an example of a negative profile because Kanye has openly shared his opinions reflecting racism and anti-Semitism without hesitation. He has even created a White Lives Matter clothing line. He shared false information on slavery numerous times and he's already gotten his Twitter account taken away from him before. Currently, Kanye's account is suspended, and questions of whether Elon Musk banned him for these comments or leaking shirtless photos of Elon Musk is unknown. Since Kanye continued violating Twitter's policies, Elon's Twitter post of explanation says, I tried my best. Despite that, he again violated our rule against incitement to violence. Account will be suspended. It is important that these social media platforms hold their users accountable and provide safety to everyone across these communication platforms. Reality versus virtual realities. There is a difference between our real lives versus the lives we post on our social media. We all know someone who always posts their food, but they're broke. Always post pictures of their happy families, but complain about the members. And it feels like some people have used social media as a coping mechanism to build this cute aesthetic life online to hide the realities of life behind closed doors. How does this perception of other people's lives affect our own life? Well, some posts we can relate to, so we follow them and start having the same values as them and the same opinions as them and over-idolize all of these profiles. A following can be good, it really just depends on the content of the profile. These virtual realities makes us wonder, do some people feel more close with their online life than their real life? This is Greta Thunberg. This is an example of a profile that shares sound information and posts with a strategy to influence followers to address your government's neglect of climate change and other social inequalities. Her values demonstrate how modernity is a juggernaut and how industrialization has rolled us into world-changing problems that powerful institutions hold the power to change. Her following is amazing for her to have started at the age of 14, and through social media, she has become famous. These are some quick pros and cons of the advantages of social media for large companies. Some pros is that big companies can develop closer relationships with the consumer, making the customer forget that they are a company. They have a more widespread advertising, and they have the chance to socially interact and test ideas without committing. Some of the cons are that more information means more things that were swept under the rug that are getting uncovered by social media. Even if time, money, and effort are put in, sometimes the returns are just not worth it and showcasing these products motivates stealing. This is the advantages of social media for small businesses. A pro is that social media is a way for us to interact and do business over a widespread area without having to go through the path traditionally businesses had to. A way to get your name out there relatively easily, you can rocket your business into a viral sensation, and it's pretty cheap advertising. Some of the cons for these small businesses is that there's not much room left for new people on social media. It is a hugely oversaturated market and everyone is on social media now. Big businesses can have access to more money and resources and often take up big advertising spots, leaving no room for small businesses. And it can be expensive. Here I have included a one-minute video explanation of an episode of Black Mirror called Nosedive. This shows a dramatized version of our society and how we become so invested with how others perceive us online rather than working towards bettering ourselves. Nosedive. Nosedive is a satire 
on acceptance and the image of ourselves we like to portray and project to others. It stars Bryce Dallas Howard, who's fantastic, and she's playing a character called Lacey, who lives her life trying to please everyone. Lacey is lost. She's lost herself in this world where she thinks that her value is equivalent to her points. Two starts. Two stars? Wasn't a meaningful encounter. Everyone is a little bit heightened and false because everyone's terrified of being marked down because the consequences of that are unpleasant. So it's basically the world we live in. <laughs> in conclusion, the evolution of technology will continue to expand time by access to easy global communication. Furthermore, social connection based on profile relativity is becoming more useful to the economy, for now. The majority of the lower class and minorities meet a lot of intersectional issues such as global warming, obesity, healthcare, childcare, the list goes on. People becoming famous on TikTok and those getting recognition on Facebook posts are not the majority. They represent how modernity has socialized what topics will determine the most likes. Another conclusion is that we need to understand we are not always safe. Sharing information might be fake, private policies won't always stand for you, and just because the app is free does not mean that you're not selling something. You are the product if the product is free. All in all, people should be spreading positivity along with the awareness of social problems. And for those who are on social media, reading the privacy policy would help reassure issues of privacy and the reality of the situation you are in as a user. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed this video. My references are to follow.